Hi, and welcome to VTS 47. I'm Keith, your friend for this month. It's uh, May 2007. We are going deeper into detail. Yes, uh, today I'm doing a little bit different. Um, my remote microphone found out that the battery is dead and there's no easy way to buy a new battery for it here. Uh, so we'll get a new one while we're traveling in the States. Uh, but in the meantime, I have another microphone set up and uh, it's a little more intimate setting today because uh, I'm sitting here and Uncle Keith's going to tell you about detail. Yeah, that's how it's going to work today. We're going to have um, a little more laid back conversation. I'm sitting in my office chair because I don't feel like standing today. Uh, no, we're going to have a, a full lecture on this one. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a, a, a full, just a straight out lecture on um, on anything animation wise. Done a lot of screen gra grab stuff. Been showing a lot of details of how to. But uh, this month I want to get into talking about the principle of how to use detail properly. Okay, because this is an area that uh, a lot of younger animators. Are, I think are being led astray a little bit by where the industry is going. And I also think that our natural tendency is to want to rearrange the deck chairs on the Titanic when we have problems. Um, and so what I want to do is, is kind of cover some ideas. Uh, but let me go ahead and before I get into that, let me tell you a little story about a building. Okay, now imagine a building was made. This building is a nice building. It's an office building. People are supposed to work there. But there's a problem with the building. All the doors are this wide. Now they're tall enough, but they're only this wide. That's difficult for people to go through. So there's a problem with the building. All the doors are only eight inches wide. Well, the builder of the building looks at that and says, well, this, this, there's something wrong with this building. Uh, something absolutely wrong with this building. So, um, I got it. Let's change the color of the carpet. That'll make people happy. And so, somehow, they get the equipment in there and they change the color of the carpet. And then people go to work there and they say, there's still something wrong with this building. The doors are all eight inches wide. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I can see that's a problem. Um, tell you what. We're going to put new paint in the lobby. Mm -hmm. New paint in the lobby. That's what we're going to do. That's really going to do the trick. And you know what? Not just any paint. We're going to get top of the line paint. We're going to go get like this, this uh, expensive Italian hand painting kind of dude. We're going to hire him and his crew to come in. They're all going to like this hand mural and like sponge painting. And it's going to be beautiful. And you know what? They bring in there and the guy comes in the lobby and he does a beautiful job. Fantastic painting. I mean, the the mural is, is breathtaking. It almost causes you to weep. And then the rest of the room, the colors play off the light that fall into the room. And, and it just, it's just this elevating experience. But all the doors are still eight inches wide. And then the guy who built the building, who owns it, says, well, okay, we've tried the carpet. That didn't make people happy. We've tried the paint. That didn't make people happy. I'll tell you what, we'll take the roof off. The roof has to come off the building. It's just too, it's all that. We need sunlight. That's what we need. And so they went and in each room took a chunk off the roof. Great. Now when it rains, all the equipment gets wet. And birds fly and land inside the building and poop on things. Um, and the doors are still all eight inches wide. So why do I tell you this story? Well, it's kind of how we animate, isn't it? Uh, with a lot of with a lot of thought to well, there's something wrong with this scene. I know what it needs more detail, huh? No, no, no. Uh, the one thing that computer animation does really, really well is detail, textures, and light, and shading, and 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 every. Uh, every advancement practically for the past 10 years in the technology for what computer animation can do is a lot of it is focused on detail. Like list off the, the probably the three 
most impressive improvements in the technology in the last five years. You got uh, high definition uh, HDRI imagery. I don't even know what R means. It's, it's basically light based imagery. Okay, so you have this high definition range imagery where you can use different f stops in order to you, all these different exposures to light a scene. So you use image based lighting. Okay, that's so that things feel more in, in the location. Uh, Ambient occlusion to give all those subtle self-shadowings in the cloudy days. That's another detail thing. Um, subsurface scattering. It's a material to give you the luminescence of the details of how light plays underneath the skin and candles and wax and marble. And these are all great advancements for, you know, in, in the world of rendering. And so we make advancements in texture, we make advancements in muscles, we make advancements in hair and in, in and in shaders and in lighting and in all these areas, this is what CG is really good at, okay? But while that's all well and good, when it comes right down to the nitty gritty of stuff that needs to be made, unless you're going to use motion capture, detail and motion as a solution to a larger problem isn't really gonna solve many problems. Um, just simply from the standpoint that it's, it's it's kind of misguided, much like the owner of the building that I told you about, who has a, a fundamental problem. His doors are not functional. Okay, well, they're functional. People can kind of turn sideways and squeeze their way through them and grumble, but the doors in the building don't work. And so the thought is, well, I'll change the color of the carpet, I'll change the painting. And when that didn't work, and beautiful carpet, beautiful painting, the details were fabulous. Then he decides to fix something in the core aspect of the building, but the wrong something. Okay, he takes roofs off. And this is, this is how young animators animate. We look at a scene, we say, oh gosh, you know, there's something missing from this scene. It, it just, just doesn't, it's not working. It doesn't have that, it doesn't look like it's from The Incredibles. Boy, there's something missing. I know what they had in The Incredibles. They had really subtle details in the acting. So we get in there and we start tweaking around the face, like, oh, really studying. Oh yeah, we're gonna move it. Oh yeah, that's right, we're gonna move this around. Perfect, oh yeah, that's right, okay. Meanwhile, our pose looks like this. Okay, and we want the guy to have this, this, you know, or he moves like, you know, the, the, the structure is, is, is messed up, but there's so much talk these days about, oh, you know, the, the, to take your work to the next level, you got to really pay attention to the details. And to a point that's true, but, um, you know, you also can't just say, I'm going to pay attention to the details and that's going to make it all better. Uh, in my animation personal trainer program, I, a lot of students come to me saying, I want to learn how to polish my work better. And I say, okay, well, the best way to learn how to polish your work better is to do your blocking better. And they don't understand that at first. But the, the concept for detail is detail needs, in order for detail to work, detail needs to rest on a stable base. Okay, in order for the painting to be appreciated on the wall, this beautiful mural painting, the wall has to actually stand up, okay? And it has to be outside of the rain, you know? In order for the beautiful carpet to work well, um, you have to actually be able to get into the room and you have to be able to stand up in the room. If the, if the, if the ceiling is all four and a half feet tall, you can have the most beautiful carpet in the world and people are gonna be crawling around on their hands and knees. They're not gonna care too much about your carpet because your room doesn't work. So, what is detail? Well, detail, it, there's, there's a certain principle to it, okay? I believe, uh, so, some might watch this and say, well, gosh, in the first 10 minutes, Keith is ragging on detail. He doesn't like detail at all. He just wants stuff to be simple. And that's not true at all. You need detail in order to define certain things, okay? Um, it, it, what detail is, it, it, it adds visual variety and to color in the, the unspoken inference that exists in, in the basic structure. Now that's a fancy way of saying a whole lot of nothing, isn't it? What, what, that, what I mean by that is you can, you can have shapes, you can have structures, you can have things that can be interpreted any number of ways, okay? And what details do is they kind of help color that in a little bit. All right, uh, let's take a, look at, uh, take a look at a couple examples here. Uh, here we have a circle, okay? And, and the circle is the underlying structure, okay? That's the circular shape, it's the underlying structure. It is circular, there's a structure to it. However, if you notice in the middle, it's just blank, 
There's nothing there. That's what I call the unspoken inference space, if you want to think about it that way. Inside of the underlying structure, inside of it is a space that needs more definition. Okay? Um, so what do we do when we put some details in that space? Let's take a look at this one right here. This is detail, these small little circles, now put into that unspoken inference, that space inside the larger structure. We've, changed, we've not changed the underlying structure at all. We've taken a, a circle and turned it into a moon. And what turned the circle into a moon is the detail. Okay? It's, it's a, so don't think I'm saying detail is not important. Detail is very important, but it has to have a structure in order to work. Okay? Let's say we put in a different detail. Let's put in this little kind of curvy square thing. Now all of a sudden, this detail takes the structure and turns it into a plastic ball. Same structure, we went from a moon to a plastic ball. What changed it? The inference of the, of the detail. All right, let's take that out and let's put in this structure, or I mean this detail. Same structure, circular shape, and with these lines and these little things, we've now taken this same circle and turned it into a tasty pizza. Okay? The difference is that the details changed how we understood the underlying structure. All right? The underlying structure didn't change, but when you add the details to it, you start filling in that space. You start defining things even more. However, if we take away the underlying structure and I just give you a bunch of circles on a page, what is it? Is it a moon? Is it Swiss cheese? Is it a bunch of pebbles on the ground? We don't know. It's just a bunch of circles. Uh, let's say we take away the underlying structure of the circle and we just put this little highlight. What is that? I don't know. It's its own empty structure now. It doesn't mean anything. Let's say we take and we put the, the pizza stuff in there. You might be able to still understand that this is a pizza or you might think it's some weird abstract art. What I'm trying to say here is focusing on detail without having a properly functioning underlying structure it just introduces noise. It's not, it, doesn't, it doesn't help define things any better by having a broken or a non-existent or an un imperceptible underlying structure. These are all problems. If your underlying structure doesn't have, is, is, if you can't see it, if you can't perceive it, if you can't understand it, or if it doesn't even exist, then adding detail does not help at all. In fact, it makes it worse. So if I want to say, I want to draw a picture of a moon. I need the underlying structure first, whether it's a circle, whether it's a, a, you know, a sliver of a moon shape or a half moon shape or a quarter moon shape. I need some kind of structure first. Then adding the details makes it beyond a shadow of a doubt that that's a moon, okay? So detail without an underlying structure is just noise. It's visual noise and it, and it, it, there's no central, there's no guiding principle. There's no shepherd here, okay? Nobody's driving the bus. It's just careening down the hill all willy-nilly and all the passengers are just bouncing around. Ah, okay? That's, that's what detail without a functioning underlying structure gives you. Without detail, structure survives and thrives. What does that mean? You don't need detail to tell me what it is. If I choose the right underlying structure, Instead of a circle for a moon, let's say I use uh, a, a more you know, quarter moon shape. If you ask any, two, any first grader in the world, what's that? They'll say, it's the moon. There's no detail in there to tell them that. But they understand that structure. That structure says moon. Okay? The circular structure could also say moon, but it could also say a lot of other things. So if you choose the right structure, you can get away without any detail at all, and you can get the idea across. Now, when you add detail to the proper underlying structure, now you got something that's art. Now you got something that's like, it's constructed. It's got, it says something clear. Nobody can ever mistake for what that is. You know, they're not gonna look at that and say, uh, it's a Parcheesi game. No, they're gonna look at it and say it's a moon, okay? So without detail, the proper underlying structure, if it exists, if it's clear, if it's chosen right, if it's designed well, if it's constructed right, can do 
most of the speaking for you. Now, this is true in animation when we take a look at, um, you know, when people say, well, you know, you should be able to express the, the emotion of a character just in the body language. And, and there are, you know, you, it's a very common thing for early people, uh, younger students who are learning to move bodies around, that we don't give them rigs with faces that, that are all, you know, really detailed. We give them a beach ball with two black eyes, if that. Sometimes we don't even give them the black eyes, we just give them a beach ball head. And we ask them, hey, go ahead and make a pose where this guy is sad. What we're doing is, or what those teachers are doing or other teachers are doing, whenever somebody gives you that kind of an exercise, they're basically saying to you, you're not allowed to use detail. You have to use only underlying structure to project a clear, unambiguous, definite idea about what this is. All that to say that structure, if you're looking for hierarchy of what can solve your problems or where, you know, where you're going to find solutions or the ability to communicate, if you have good structure, you don't even need detail. and You can pretty clearly express an idea. However, what detail does is it kind of fills in the details, that's the name, the details of that idea. It can give you subtle shades where the underlying structure is a crayon box of 64 colors. Detail allows you to expand that color palette out to millions of colors. And there's a certain richness to that, that that we have come to expect, and we definitely want that, and it is, there's, a, there's a higher expectation that we're going to get that level of definition. But if you've got the wrong underlying structure, detail doesn't work. So without structure, detail just annoys us. Um, and so it, it, you could listen to machinery and chainsaws and cars, car horns beeping and jackhammers and people yelling. You can just take, you know, a typical New York City street sound, layer it in 10 times, just keep adding, adding, adding and listen to it and it's going to make our ears bleed. But you can take each of those things and sample those noises and you put them into an underlying structure of rhythm and beat and music and all of a sudden you have Art of Noise, which is an interesting little band from the 80s, which would take these kinds of industrial samples and make music from them. Okay. What they did is they took the detail and made it slave to the structure. And that's really where you need to go. So why do I talk about all this stuff and what does this mean to the rest of us? Well, detail is necessary to expand to the full expression of itself, of, of, of a thing. Okay? So how is, it, how is it constructed when you stop and think about it? When you take a look at paintings, or you take a look at sculptures, or even writing, or uh, engineering, or architecture, any of, these, any of these things, when is detail conceived of? Well, actually, there's no point where it's right to think about detail and it's wrong to think about detail. Okay? You can actually take a piece of detail and from that spin out an entire idea. So detail is something you think about at any time. Uh, you know, I may be motivated by a particular piece of, uh, and this happens a lot of times when I'm writing a story, there's like this little interchange between two people. It's a very detailed little moment, and, but there's something fun there and it's very definite. And that little piece of detail kind of has a flavor to it. And you're like, wow, that's, that's really neat. And from that, you're inspired to work out a fuller expression of a, of a grander idea. And you want to use that detail piece as, as a feature inside of it. But you can't, you can't construct things that way. Like an architecture, an architect may be inspired by the way light dances off of water. Okay, it's a very inspiring and at times soothing and, and mesmerizing thing. So they may have this detail as an idea, as an inspiration. Okay, you can use details as inspirations, but you can't use details as structures. Okay. Um, the, so the inspiration is how light plays off of water and he wants that magical dancing of the, of the many flares. And so what he thinks is I want to make the central, play, the central point, the inspirational point of my building to work off of this idea of light dancing off of water. But now he has to make the building. And he can work out a place where that detail can fit, but he has to build a structure all the way around it. And if that structure isn't functioning, he can make the world's greatest fountain in the lobby and the building is not going to function. 
okay? Because uh, ultimately all architecture, while it is an expression of beauty in, in structure, it also does need to function, okay? The air conditioning has to work, the doors have to be large enough, the elevators have to go up and down and not fall through the floor. Uh, you know, it has to keep water out and, you know, the buildings have utilitary functions. And animation is the same. Animation has a function. It first has to be clear. It has to be expressive and clear and, and very concise. Okay, because the, the ability to express these ideas in a very subtle way still eludes 99.9999999% of animators that exist on the planet. It's just that's the way it is. Um, and so an animation is, is a medium of exaggeration. It's a medium of uh, condensation. You boil things down to their, to their core elements and you express that, okay? And the way you boil things down, if you're writing, you just, the, 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 the greatest gift that a writer has is what to leave out, not what to put in, okay? And animation's the same way. What do you leave out versus what you put in? And anybody who's taken any, uh, any writing training or courses or, or any of that or tried to write they understand this they understand that great writing is all about what's left unsaid and you infer towards those things that's great writing like there's a reason why Hemingway everybody loves Hemingway and his writing style is exceedingly simplistic exceedingly so okay and but in that simplicity he opens your mind to various ideas okay he 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 leaves your imagination enough room to fill in those details. And that's where you invite the audience to come in. If you're just trying to slavishly recreate realism, that's reproduction, okay? Um, CG tends to have a, a desire to do that. And in certain, certain aspects, you need to do that. When you're matching live action film, you're doing VFX work, uh, you're trying to get, do games where you're trying to immerse people into this realistic, believable environment, uh, then you gotta focus on that stuff. Um, but if you're trying to say something, if you're trying to get an, uh, an expression across, if you're trying to be more artistic in, in how you're using the medium, then say less. And that means sometimes leave a detail off. Uh, the best example in animation I can think of for people who leave the details off but still put the right ones in is Artman Animations. Those guys are genius. Nick Park, uh, you know, Peter Lord, and some of their other directors that they have there are just fantastic. I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Stefan Marjoram and, and the work he does. His facial animation is impeccable. It's awesome. The, the stuff that, that he thinks of when he, does, when he does his facial animation, when he does his acting, he did a pose and that, that's it. There's no more movement. That's it. He just, it. No moving holes. Nothing. He hits it and the, and the curves are dead. But it works because it's the right structure. And then the details he puts in, oh my gosh, the details are fantastic. Uh, he does these little things with the mouth where he's like, uh, you know, he doesn't do flowing, realistic lip sync. He does lip sync that's real, if that makes any sense at all. Um, he'll do things that, that are just like, I, every time I watch it, I smile because he's choosing the right details to open your mind up to a place and he's inviting the viewer to come in and say, believe these guys, believe this world, believe these characters. But at the same time, it's a different place. It's a, it's a fanciful place. It's very real, but it's not realistic. And I think Ardman does some fantastic work in knowing what details to put in and which details to leave out. And you can't say that, that you know, the world of Wallace and Gromit is, is an unrich world, but it, you, you also would look at it and say it's a fairly simplistic one. And you look at all the things that are going on, the lighting and, and everything, it's just, yes, there's a certain, okay, you're photographing real puppets and real light with real materials, so there's already, they got a, you know, an A plus on that. And so they get a lot of their quote unquote details for free. But you just take a look at it artistically you take, and especially take a look at how the motion is developed. Take a look at the motion. Uh, Gromit does not move like a real dog, okay? When you watch Gromit walk, he doesn't do this. He goes straight across and his legs do underneath him. So just and it totally works. I, you, and you look at that and you're thinking, how does that totally work? That's because they're using the right details at the right time and they have an underlying structure that they trust. 
okay? So when you think about details, you can be inspired by details at any moment. You can build entire ideas around details, but you can't build the details first and expect everything else to kind of fit around it. You kind of have to say, okay, here's my detail. I like it, it's my precious little detail, I love it. Okay, now that I know it, I'm gonna set it aside. Now I'm gonna build my structure and then leave a space, a stable base, for my detail. And that's how you build things. You build underlying structures and if you have a specific piece of detail that you want to fit somewhere, you build a space for it and then you put that detail in the proper space. And that's where you, that's how you function. Uh, so you need to have these larger defining structures first. And then the details need to be put into the proper place. Uh, how, does this, how does this play out in animation? Well, one of the things that I'll, I'll see, especially a lot of student work, a lot of student work, you know, a character is kind of got some weird, there's something funky in the pose, and there's something funky in the timing of how they got there, and the ease didn't work right, and the breakdown didn't work right, and so you have this kind of weird, awkward move into a kind of weird, awkward pose, and the moving hold is kind of floaty, and you're like, well, I guess so, but you'll see that the uh, the student animator has animated the fingers, kind of drumming on the table, or they're doing something with the face. You know, they got well eye darts. You know, eye darts is like the the world's famous. Everybody just loves to do eye darts now. It's like the detail that you put on anything. It's like the the detail that fixes everything. Well, actually, it's not. Um, and so you see these little eye darts and finger twiddles and face twitches layered on top of structures that need work. And so the, the, the proper thing is to get your underlying structure working first. Now, how, does this, how, do, how do I make this work? Well, a lot of times I am inspired by a piece of detail. Um, if I have a character, I'm listening to the dialogue and saying, okay, he's going to say, and I want a little head shake right here. I want a little, you know, I kind of want a little, you know, a little, a little something. Uh, or maybe I'm thinking, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to talk and the guy's going to do, uh, okay, so you have this. This, this is detail, okay, all the fingers going. If you tried to block all that out, you have all these keys. You're gonna get, your character's gonna be all over the place because it's just gonna be, it's gonna be too much. Um, to, try and, to try and build that out, uh, you know, in a blocking stage, you'll have like 500 keys and it'll be ungainly. And then when you try and clean it up, there'll be too much in the curves and it'll be all over the place. And you'll spend all your time trying to make this work in the blocking. Well, simple, just block this. Well, what about all that stuff? I mean, there's a, there's a certain flavor to this. You know, if you have a character, you know, it's two different characters. One character would say, well, I don't know about all this. There could be certain reasons for things. Okay, and another guy can say, well, I don't know about all this. There could be certain reasons for things. Okay, these are two different things. One is steady. Da -da 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 the other guy could be da 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 He does certain things with his hands. He's more flourishy with his hands. Well, I would block both the same way. But in my thumbnails or in my planning, I would say, this guy, you know, frames 100 to 150. Don't forget the fingers, you know, the little finger thing. And maybe for details, I'll shoot a little, a little video reference of, of my hands kind of doing, you know, da 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 So I know what it looks like. I can break it down. But I'm not going to build that right at the beginning. No. What I'm going to block is pose, pose, moving hold, maybe a little pose hit, you know, and then come out of it. Sorry, hit the microphone. Didn't mean to do that. So come out of it. So that's how I build that structure, and I get that structure working smooth and solid and stable and awesome. Because any detail I put on top of that, if that if that base is kind of wobbling all over the place, or isn't clear, or if the silhouette's kind of goofy, or the pose is kind of uncomfortable, no amount of detail here is going to fix any of that. And that's really the big thing. You know, if I have a character who wants to feel comfortable, I have the hand kind of, you know, back up a little bit here. You see there's a certain weight to it. Maybe I want the elbow to be in. It's a lady or something. So, well, and then she does these little things like, you know, little finger things. So see, maybe she's some Italian, you know, mob lady or some from Jersey. Well, I don't know that. You know, there's some kind of goofy acting thing like that. Um, just, give, just put the perm in the hair. 
You know, you just do this little thing. Well, get this and don't worry about all this. Get this working and block that out and then clean that up and then spline clean that up and then save the blip, 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 blip stuff for the space. You create a space for it. Remember we create a space and then you put the detail in the space or the light playing on the water. What you do is you create the lobby that can accommodate this. You make sure that the windows are in the right place so that they catch the morning light. And then you have other windows and catch the afternoon light. You make sure that you know, things work around it. You have to create a space, a proper structure, and then put the detail inside of it. Okay, so what this is, is it creates the proper structure. Ding. Clean that up, go away. Now, if I, my structure is this, some uncomfortable thing, and then I do this, well, no amount of this is going to fix this problem right here. Okay, it, it's a, it says completely something different than this. This says, you know, flamboyant or something. Okay, this says, who knows what this says? Uh, it says, oh, my arm hurts. Uh, but you, you gotta, you gotta have that structure. You gotta have, build that place, and you do that in your blocking. So when you know students come to me and say, I want to learn how to polish better. I want to work out the details better. I always say, Well, you need to learn how to block better. And so you have to come back to that and and work on that idea. And so you may say, Well, what if what if I you know do the root to the fruit kind of layer things out? I mean, does this still work? Sure, it still works. It can still work. You can. But one of the one of the dangers is if you try to if you try to solve larger problems by putting details on it, it is like the architect who is trying to make the doors wider by putting in new carpet. It doesn't, it doesn't address the problem. Okay? If your silhouettes are poor, putting finger motion on it doesn't fix it. If your, if your body language is saying the wrong emotion, putting emotion in the face it might help, but it's, I don't know that it's going to really fix the problem with the body. If, you're, if your weight is off, putting overlapping, you know, little things, if the weight in the hips is off, I mean, this is serious, like if your character's walking, and making sure that his coat flaps properly isn't going to fix the problem in, in the weight of the hips, okay? If, if the arcs aren't clean, uh, putting in deformations on, you know, smearing the character isn't going to fix the arc, okay? Uh, these these are all detail fixes to structure problems, and it, it, they don't uh, they don't address them. And one of the problems with, with this approach, and it's one that you know, I struggled with for years. Okay, I thought, oh man, there's something here, so I'd sit there and I just noodle away on this little detail, noodle, 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 and I'd be there and I'd look up eight hours later. I'm thinking, this thing looks like crap still. Well, that was just basically spending my time putting in new carpet in a building that needed new doors, all right? So the, the way we work uh, is, is to get lost on these rabbit holes of details. You know, we'll spend all this time working on the, the little flourish of the fingers. So we study and we play with the curves and we do a little play blast and we scrub and we're in there and we're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then we look at it and we're like, but it doesn't, it's still not working. There's something still not working here. Well, back up from the details, kind of pull yourself out of the Alice in Wonderland rabbit hole and say, hmm, maybe there's a structure problem here. And look at the structure. And we know what is the difference between structure and detail. You know, that, that line is kind of fuzzy. I'll be honest with you. Um, you know, little, little hand hits. You can say that's detail. You could also say it's structure, depending, you know, how, how fine your filter is, okay? Uh, the way I tend to look at it is, uh, the, anything that can sit on top of something else, not like physically sitting on top of a box, but I mean, any motion or any gesture or any expression or any little change that can fit inside of a larger pose and not drastically affect that pose, to me is a detail. And that's a pretty wide definition when you think about it. So let's say, you know, uh, for the most part, I can be here in this pose right here. Now let's say this is my pose. And I can be doing all kinds of things here. I can do little head nods and little fingertips and all kinds of stuff. And I mean, everything I'm talking about here, you know, all this little hand hit, uh, little head moves, little look to the side, uh, 
you know, the, the facial expressions, the, little, the head shakes, and all these things are detailed. I've still maintained this one pose for about the last 30 seconds. And this is where live action gets away with things that animation has a hard time getting away with. Because if you kept this one pose for going on a minute now uh, in animation with all these little details, um, and you didn't have the proper story or motivation to support it, uh, your director might say, that, what's wrong with you? Okay. So all that, all that talking, all that, not, and that, here's a big change. I kind of moved back a bit and I put my hand forward and now that was a big enough change. So I had two poses. I had this pose and then I had this pose. And then all the little things I do here, all these little things and all that little stuff and all the little, little hand hits and little head wobbles and all that stuff. That's detail. Okay, even that, the little, the, how my, that's detail. How my eyes pop and how the hands come up and maybe my head pops up a little bit. And then if I sat back a bit, that's a third pose. And I can do all kinds of things here with the hand up and, you know, do stuff like this and little head shakes. I mean, we're talking about specific, subtle acting. Anything that happens inside of a larger pose structure. You have this pose and all kinds of detail. And you had this pose and all kinds of detail. And you had this pose and all kinds of detail. Three poses. So how long will that take to block out? You know, an hour? How long will it take to clean that up? So that, you know, all that is stable. Because here's the thing, if, if, if you've got noise in the, in the way your, your character's hips move, the eyes are gonna go gah, 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 gah. And anything you do in here, in the face, won't register, okay? Little things, little details need a stable platform. They need, they're like little actors in a, in, in a play. They come out on the, I'm wearing my shepherd's costume. I'm wearing my little sheep costume. Coming out to do my Christmas play. That's what details are. They're like little kids coming out to do a first grade Christmas play. And what do they need? They need a raised stage that's steady so they can do their thing. Well, what's a pose? A pose is the stage. Set the stage. You build it, it's structural, it's solid, it's, it's not distracting. It's not rocking back and forth. It doesn't have it doesn't have this going on in it. Would you, can you register any of the emotions in any of this if I were to just do this all the time? I mean, if, if my my poses. I mean, that's just crazy. It's hard to do. But if my if my bass has noise in it or wobbly, or if if my bass is just kind of slowly wobbling back and forth because my moving holds are sloppy and I got all this slop going on. And the, the details on it, you know, so I got all these, it's just, it's, it's a weird, weird thing. You got to get the bass working solid. And sometimes it is only two or three poses. I've done scenes in films where I've done two poses. Literally two poses and a bunch of detail. I had one scene where a guy did one pose and everything else was detail. And everything else was detail. He didn't move, he didn't change anything. His, his body didn't change, he was just standing straight up and down. And that's all he was doing the whole time. Just straight up and down, looking off into space, and he says one line, and he's breathing, and he's kind of squinting his eyes. And his shoulders kind of stiffen up a little bit. And that's it. That's it. And it was like, it's not, a, it wasn't like a two, two second shot. It was like four or five second shot. But that's all the story needed. That's, it was one pose with a bunch of detail on top of it. Now I spent my time getting the right pose, okay? I found a structure that was very specific and very communicative. Instead of choosing a circle for a moon, I chose the moon shape for a moon, I, metaphorically speaking, okay? And so that's, that's that's the trick there is is to find that that structure that's like bam it just says pow that's what this guy's thinking this guy's that's what he's feeling that's what he's all about and if you spend your time on that man you can put you can put details on it you you can put a ton of details on it it might be too much or you can put a few details on it, it might be just enough you put the the right ones on it and it's just absolutely perfect I think, you know, one of the best hand-drawn animators alive today is James Baxter. I love his work because it's sublime. What do I mean by that? It's he's like a master musician. He doesn't try and 
he, it's not like he's he's some third-rate you know American Idol contestant trying to sing the national anthem at you know at a baseball game. You know what I'm talking about? You, I mean, if you're in America, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The people who have to you know, oh say can you see what is that? That's six notes, okay? And they take that and they turn it into thirty-six. Oh, 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 oh say can you? I mean, good grief! It's just there's too many notes, and too many, it's all over the place, and it's 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 it's, it's amateurish, okay? It's just I don't like it because it's like there's it's like ah oh, the details are drowning the structure. The the structure is do 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 do. It's simple, okay? And what James Baxter is like is he's like the guy who he's a perfect composer. He knows exactly which notes to play, and he doesn't play any other doesn't play any other notes. He finds a great structure, great poses, and he puts just the perfect little details into them. I mean, just amazing little details. And they're not, it's not like he's, it's not like he's got a gajillion drawings in there. He's not drawing it all out on ones. You know, he doesn't have, you know, on a, on a 75 frame shot, he doesn't make 75 drawings. He's got maybe, you know, eight to 12 drawings in there, plus, you know, maybe 15 breakdowns, and he hands it off to his assistant, and they just in between it. And his stuff is sublime. It's, it's heavenly how good it is, okay? Because he knows exactly which structures to use, and he knows exactly which details to fit into the space that he creates for them in that structure. And that, to me, is the pinnacle of animation. I mean, if you can get there, you are really good. I mean, you are like at a place where everything you look at like that pose that pose is just I mean and not the details I mean you just kind of we tend to go to the details like oh it's so realistic but you can get caught up in the details and if they're layered on the wrong pose it doesn't matter how well executed the details are uh, but the pose if the pose is right oh my gosh it could be perfect and then you put in just these little tiny details. And that's kind of what I'm talking about with, with Ardman. They seem to understand exactly what the moment needs. And they put just what that moment needs in there. And then they say, hmm, need some detail. One, two, three. And they put it in there, and it's beautiful. Not like, okay, uh, I guess that's close enough. Now let me get in here and just throw in a bunch of things and try and rescue it. Okay, so what I want to do, uh, that's, that's, that's my lecture for this month. Uh, for those of you who don't like me to do the lectures, uh, I'm sorry. There's a lot of people who like it. There's a lot of people who like this instead of watching screen grab stuff in Maya. Uh, it's been a while since I've done this, and I felt like this is an important thing to kind of get a concept on. Because what I want to do next month, BTS 28, is I want to show you what this looks like when I start working with my own stuff. And if you followed along for a while, you, you might have a better understanding of where I'm going with this. But... The important thing is to understand where to put the details and how to build a structure for it. So a lot of this builds on where we were at in you know, earlier VTSs with blocking and with breakdowns and with uh, you know, even the post-blocking cleanup. All of that work is building up to a place where I can build a stable, clean, well-defined structure that has a space for just the right kinds of details. No more, no less. And it's not like I don't like details in my animation. I love details in my animation. I just want the right ones in the right place for the right reasons to say the right thing and to do the right job, okay? So that's where we're gonna go next month. And as for this month and my phone ringing, sorry about that. Next month I'll have my, uh, my old Jazzercise headphone back. Um, I apologize for the uh, concrete box sound this month. Uh, I know some folks really get annoyed about the production values of these videos. Um, I tend to not to worry too much about it. I mean, hey man, it's 15 bucks, man. I mean, what do you want? You, you, somebody said, come listen to, you know, an animation director give a, you know, a 45 minute or an hour long lecture and you get to sit in the back of the room and it only costs you 15 bucks. You'll go. Okay, so that's kind of how I look at it. And the production value, I could make it fancy and build a little sound stage. And you know what, one of these days, maybe I will. But I don't, you know, to me, it's more important to communicate the ideas. And I like these little intimate things. It keeps it low, low key, kind of fun. It's like me and you just sitting down, having a coffee, sharing a cookie, talking about animation. Okay, that was creepy, um, yeah, but I'm having fun. Uh, so anyways, Thanks for, for playing along with that finger right in the camera.
Thanks for playing along. Thanks for coming. Um, I'm glad for you new subscribers. You're thinking, this guy's insane. This guy's nuts. Hopefully you learned something today, okay? And for you old dogs who've been around for a while, I'm glad you can, came back and you're sticking with it. And we're gonna have real fun going in this next month. I'm gonna show you more on the computer and kind of explain more of where I'm going. I'm not gonna really show you a lot of new information as far as like concepts, but more it's more it's about taking what I talked about this month and what does it look like inside of an actual animated scene, okay? And so we'll build that up and we'll kind of talk through various stages of it and you'll see what I'm getting at, okay? That's enough rambling for me this month. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And, and if you have any questions or anything like that, of course, email me. I'll try to get back to you. Emails sometimes pile up. So if it takes me a while, sorry. Uh, it's only me. It's just a little me. I don't have a raft of assistants. I don't have an army of people to work for me. Uh, not that an army of people to work for you is a bad thing. Oh, don't get me wrong. Okay, army of people is a good thing. Yeah, I just I don't have it. So, uh, all right. Uh, until then, you guys be good. God bless. All the best. And we'll see you in June 2007. Coming to a theater near you.